Armstrong, Falcon, my bad books, Going Boom, that's a good piece of book. Um, but try and have some fun getting that. Points there. I'll try and play as many people as I can. In about an hour and a half for my coffee. Let's see how it goes. I'll be trying to keep track of the chat. Yeah, any opening recommendations, suggestions in chat, I'll try and follow them throughout lunch. Oh, is even never hear me okay now? I left my mic on. Okay. Probably better not to have this in the place in the Maybe if I'm a bit closer to my mic, that might improve. Days ago, not to off my desk. Hopefully, it's all worked out. Okay. What to do? I'll play you five, I'll play my name to you four. And my night. I'm just trying to uh, figure out what might be the issue with the sound. These sessions are always quite interesting. I'm not sure sharp is the right word, but some interesting strategic battles between uh, like having a bit less space, but some light squares here. The fintech is always so solid that it's hard to uh, drum up counterplays, but I'll do my best. Okay, cool. I'm glad you guys can hear better now. Not sure what the problem was. I haven't lost the game in the meantime, so that's a bonus. So I'm hoping the C3 square is going to be a, a nice outpost for me. Maybe I won't run. I when you drop to knight back, I'm thinking of putting my knight into C3, but I might just leave it on E4. My knights look so pretty. It's a shame to exchange it for his offside knight on A4. Uh, and yeah, um, either time control or then uh, three or five. I'll be happy to accept. But at the moment, I'll just try going down the list and see where we get to. Uh, 
So apologies if we don't get around to a game. Okay, that's I'm sure this is the best Dutch in the world, yeah. Probably it still doesn't mean I'm better, but if we compare this now in D5 to one in A4. Should be very pleasant. I'm dreaming of playing Queen G5 when he moves the knight away, knight f4 check. But that's probably a bit too ambitious. Just gonna double on the C file. Problem of having a nice looking position is that you can just stare at it for hours without uh, actually coming out with a move, just admiring it, which is extremely dangerous in any kind of blitz chess. Mm, G5, G4, H5, H4. We'll try and do some tactics against this rook. Now let's try some tactics. So he doubles his man's natural, and then wants to throw a knight into C3. Not sure which one yet. Cutting off the one on C6. So he's retreated. Uh, what to do? Guys, I need some help of which side of the board I should be playing on. Let's try. Subtle move. My plan is to double on the A file, it's, and then either a sacrifice exchange or a swap on C3 and win some pawns. Basically, as long as I can keep my knights, then uh, I've got a very nice looking position. Okay, I don't believe you're mating me, so we'll ignore that. Moki, though, it's uh, yeah, an unusual name going. He was one of the Knights of the Round Table, a English myth, legend, King Arthur. Okay, can I play Knight into C3? But yeah, then the other met one other guy in. My winning material here. <clears throat> if he takes, I'm going to take back with the pawn and then fork the Queen and Rook. But otherwise, I don't see what he does. I'll be able to. Uh, uh, this maybe is what he does. Breaks in the center. Okay, guess I have to take that. Can I do anything pretty down the long diagonal here? Queen c6 is maybe just pinning myself to f3. So, okay, time to collect something. A Dutch defender. And thanks, Zealand. Yep. Uh, describing my name better than I was. Uh, okay, let's take that. That one looked like a scary attacking piece. I guess I should cut the queens off as well. It's been quite a strategic game to start. The battle on the light squares and the powerful knights. And discussion of the round table. Let's be greedy and hold on to that one. The problem is this now in d5 is just controlling everything on the board, so too difficult to generate counterplay. So I can just start eating things. Okay, thanks, Crypto. They challenge that one. And hello, Zevich, are you still there? I'm trying to go through the uh, oldest challenges first. Just give who jumped in first. Let's try a dragon for the first game. Ah. Uh, you're going to play some Grand Prix. It was uh, refreshing. Oh, A3. Refreshing to see the Grand Prix played yesterday in the Norway tournament. 
obviously the first outing in a Super Gem tournament quite a while. Back in the 90s, uh, it was scoring well. Hmm. I don't know what to do now. So you're ready. I'm going to play B4. Let's uh, try and play principally. He's wasted move with A3, so play in the center. After bishop c4, move a3 sort of makes sense. But yeah, it was nice to see a proper old-fashioned Grand Prix attack played by Ariane Tari. I felt it was a bit strange that uh, he played the Grand Prix in the first game and then needing to win in the second one switched to a bishop b5 check, which has a more dull reputation. It somehow worked. Here yeah, it looks like we're going into an end game quite quickly. I see a few checks. I see seven check is annoying, but I'm going to uh, castle queen side with check to cover that square. Day is drawing in. I need to remember to turn on my light. I'll do that at the end of the next game, at the end of this game. Or else I'll be plunged into darkness for the last game. Oh, sorry, Shadow Mate. Uh, what's your Chess24 username? And I'll try and remember. And thanks, Zealand. I like my name too. It's, uh, although it does make it hard work when you go into a coffee shop and they ask for your name and there I always hesitate and try and think of what my name should be that day. Can I be greedy here? I can win another pawn with a6 but let's try just developing instead. I keep this king trapped in the center we might get some pretty mating ideas even without the queens on the board. So, do I have a good way of doing this? My a3 to c4 is going to be a bit annoying. I think I'm going to rook d2. I'd like to attack. But how? Yeah, let's just bring all my pieces into the party. Invite them to the party. Is that how Yasser puts it? And then I'll uh, play e4 and open up the center. Yeah, at the moment I'm accepting by order, um, dangerous ride. I thought that was the fairest way. I don't know if at some point I might have to, if we're running short on time, I might play some more three minute rather than five, but uh, for now I'll try and be as fair to people as I can. Okay, let's just try and get all my pieces pointing at the king and hopefully some tactic springs up. Although I'm not really sure what my, after f takes e, I'll have to go bishop d2 check. Okay. I don't think he wanted to allow this though. Something like pawn is a super strong attacking piece. Might just be picking my queen. And I apologize for any background noise. As people who've watched when I was uh, streaming more regularly will know my dog has a habit of falling asleep behind me as I'm streaming. She's snoring away. Yeah, that's should be the end of this one. 
just compare the coordination of my pieces and Sevich's problem with playing these slightly offbeat openings. Okay, let's just make that a queen. I don't think it was anything like the end of the world, but once uh, d4 was played, it became a bit ropey. If you're going to play a3, you need to play it much slower. Thanks for the game. Let's see who else who's next in line. Evidence. Hello. And I'll just turn on my light while I remember. And. Uh, opening shall we try today? Let's scotch gambit. Thanks, Sevich. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if you're following at the time, but I think you're probably needed to go bishop c4 uh, instead of d4, and things were a bit normal as it was. Your structure got a bit too ugly. This is quite a dangerous opening if Black doesn't know what he's doing. The Scotch Gambit. Solid d6, but a bit passive. Can't take back on d4 and have a reasonable Scotch, but let's try and keep it as a proper sacrifice. Some sort of Danish Gambit. Transpositions. Take that one and take the center. Yeah, as a plug, at the moment I'm writing a 1e4 repertoire, a couple of volumes probably for quality chests, and I'm suggesting the Scotch Gambit as part of the repertoire there. It's trying to be somewhat offbeat lines that will. Uh, catch your opponents a bit off guard and try and play on positions where you're more familiar than your opponent. But I'm still trying to find an advantage as well. Which is a bit tricky sometimes. The dog sneezing behind me. So my plan here is to play d5 at some point, probably have a nice outpost on e6. I could win the exchange now with knight f7. Uh, but I feel like trying for a bit more. King looks a bit weak over there on the green side to me. My pieces are going to flow that direction. While the counterplay doesn't look very convincing to me. I just may as well be when to bring my knight into e6. Let's do it now so the queen can't escape. Not quite a pup, Zealand, but uh, she's ten and a half. And we <clears throat> uh, fostered her at the start of lockdown. Back at, when was it? The start of April. And then uh, we adopted her in July. Just a 10 and a half year old Staffy, Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Very sweet. But she follows me more or less everywhere. Lucky I've not had any over the board chess to play for a while, so I've been at home. I'm trying to find some pretty tactics. Okay, let's keep the king stuck on the C file. CD, I want to play rook C1, but the knight's on E5 is covering, unfortunately. Hello, Paolo. 
so is there any way of doing rook c1, take my knight? I've got various discovered checks, but there only seems to be one check. So let's just retreat and take on d5 next move. And then knight d6 is coming as well. But yeah, let me know if you've got any opening suggestions uh, that you'd like me to try, and I'm happy to uh, attempt them. Theory in general is not be my strong point, so I'll probably mess them up quite early, but I'll give it a bash. So taking my bishop now. Hopefully that was uh, the only time she'll shake. Um, yeah, taking the bishop now without this check, so the queen is dropping. I have, well, obviously, I can take the queen, but can I show both of it with this move? Thanks, evidence, for allowing a pretty mate. Probably queen a4 isn't objective loser. Safest move, but I don't think that had any, any defense anyway. Okay, hello, Syrian. Uh, yes, fish. Uh, my name does. Where they're not it, I've explained a few times um, in the past. There's a convoluted pun. I, when I was a teenager, Syrian, you here? I'll leave a few more seconds. Yeah, when I was a teenager, I moved to Italy. Uh, and, okay. Ah, just in time, Syrian, okay. Let's have a four points attack. Uh, yeah, and I chose Vedenotti, which is Italian for green knight with an N, as you wrote. Um, and the most famous story about Sir Gawain, that we were discussing earlier, is Sir Gawain and the Green Knight with a K. So uh, that was the idea. I thought it was a kind of fun wordplay. When I was a teenager, and uh, I never came up with anything better as a handle. Uh, how am I supposed to do this one? Castle. I was doing a survey on the four pawns for new chess upcoming editions. So I had a look at this edition quite recently. I will remember anything, of course. Let's see if I was coming. Okay, let's try this one. I want to bring my knight into d6, check next. Thanks, evidence. And thanks for allowing the pretty mate. There's something very aesthetic about a double knight mate. I think knights are the pieces that make chess work as an art as well as just a game. Now, how shall I do this? Take on e7, or play c5, or move my knight somewhere. Uh, can I play knight? Takes d4. Another game where my knights are uh, deep into enemy territory. Knight takes e5. I want some idea of knight takes e6. Otherwise, f7 is a problem. I 
I don't know if you can hear two in the back. Oh, well, that didn't really stop the NATO Z6, I'm afraid, Siri. Yeah, those vexing nights. I think the four pawns is quite a critical test of the uh, of the Alekhine. It's tricky, but uh, if White knows what he's doing, I'm not really sure how Black is supposed to play against it. I had quite a lot of experience playing against. Let's go for a more sort of Bononi style. Uh, yeah, quite a lot of experience playing. Uh, I'll play a slightly risky move. Okay. I could try and exploit that move board by taking on c5 and e4 using the long diagonal before I get to finish my bishop. Yeah, sorry, where was I? So uh, I had quite a bit of experience playing against the Alakine because I moved to Ireland when I was a teenager. And the island's only grandmaster, Alexander Baburin, is more or less exclusively a Alakine player. So he kept outplaying me in these strategic battles there. Uh, so I decided I should really learn some theory. Now, can I go away with this here? Oh, the bishops are a bit loose. I was hoping that like wasn't uh, white wasn't able to hold on to everything here. Attacking the bishop on f4 and threatening to take on e5 and take on d3. Do you have a good solution? An advantage playing d4 knight f3 as opposed to d4 c4. Uh, well, it probably depends what. You're cutting out some lines. For example, the Benko. Uh, is prevented and even Benoni can, isn't so easy to achieve. I used to play the Benko more or less exclusively and their d4 knight f3 really annoyed me or simply one knight f3. The reason that I learned the King's Indian really so I could play against any move order. So it was driving me mad, just not getting it most of the time. So I think I've picked up a piece in that. Um, what to do now? Let's ask. Are you sure you don't want to exchange those bishops? Now you really have to, because otherwise it's going to be a problem on the D file. Queen E2, I'll take and play C4. trying to exchange some pieces. Probably objectively, this f4 wasn't the best move. But... Okay, Mark, I'll play one for the two in my next game, English or Dutch, depending what color I am. The English, I'm happy to play. I play it often. The Dutch, things often go a bit wrong when I try it, but See what I can remember from Simon Williams' old classical Dutch video and book. Okay, the D file before. Well, it does. Fish way six is probably not a very good move, but the idea was a cheap threat of Queen D1 and a bat rank mate. Never know, I might get it later. Yeah, two knight of three. Well, for example, things like the Nimzo are no longer playable either after two knight of three. But yeah, you're right, Dutch defender, but uh, things like the same -ish disappear. Now, is there a mate? Queen e2, take my knight. I'd like to find a good way of finishing off there. Uh, but I'm struggling.
I have to be boring and defend my knight. Hmm. Okay, let's do it the weird way. At least there should be five. The next move I'll come in with queen e2. Uh, what was your handle back on ICC, Mark? So thanks, Crypto. That was a good game to start. Interesting strategic battle. Yeah, the old days of ICC. Uh, I really want to come and involved in the game. I know I have a piece up, so it's not so necessary, but still it's nice to find some pretty mates where they where they are. Ah, okay. My parents used to live in Fermanagh. They uh, are in the process of moving to Dundee at the moment. Which isn't so straightforward in modern times. Probably I just play this sensibly and exchange some pieces. I think the Chinese dragon is reasonably popular. Um, but the problem is that it's quite rare to actually get nine bishop c4 these days. So I can win the piece here with queen e3 check and take. But can I threaten the mate? I'm allowing a couple of checks. Black, uh, white can defend with queen c8 check and back to h3 or g4 for now. So yeah, I think it's more that uh, white players don't allow the Chinese dragon. But otherwise, I think it's reasonable. I played it quite a lot. Maybe we'll get one now. Thank you, Boa. I'm for an English. We've got a quicker game. Hello, Super Hadi. Are you there? I appreciate that some of these challenges were from a while ago. So far, we had 100% hit rate, which was nice. Yeah, I never really lived in Northern Ireland myself because uh, I was a professional chess player by that point on my gap year just traveling around. Ended up moving to New Zealand and Australia quite quickly after I met my wife. Okay, Super Haiti, sorry. Uh, maybe we'll play some other time. That's a five minute game in black. Hello, why must I lose to this Boge? Are you there? Thanks, Boa, for the game. This E5 trick is one you've got to uh, watch out for in these Englishes, oh, sorry, in these London systems. Now, get a dragon. So, if I'm allowed, I'll play the Chinese dragon. But yeah, nine cups queen side is so fashionable at the moment, it's quite rare to get. And we get a classical instead. Okay. Uh, trying to think a slightly unusual move order because I'm not castled yet. E4 is the aggressive way of playing this position. Respect for playing G4. But it's a bit strange because I've not castled. I can't remember what I suggested in my book. 
So I'm on my own. I'm looking at moving my knight from c6 somewhere. Should tee up ideas in knight takes e4. Let's try knight b4. Sorry, Super Haiti. Uh, if we have time, then we can try. But uh, I've got, I know it's hard to always be there, but uh, I've got quite a few challenges. That... Just accepting what, uh, what I see in front of me. Now, what's happening here? Don't, I don't take that rook. That's not on the candidate uh, moves. But do I want to take on b3 first? I'll just start pushing my d pawn. Or just take on e3. Mm, choices, choices. Okay, let's. Or do I just do nothing? Yeah, let's take the knight. My goals. Um, okay, what's happening here? It's getting very murky with I think we should be five check things, but if Y allows it, I'm just I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. I'm going to run the depot or take on e3. Get my goals when return. I I want to play some nice games again. I feel happy with hope to play some pretty games. Uh, getting back to 2700 would be nice. I was there last year. Uh, I probably played a bit too much back to back and uh, dropped a bit. I played in the St. Louis tournament, done very strong double all play all. I started with uh, seven draws, which for me is very unusual. And I think I lost a bit of objectivity in wanting to win a game and ended up losing the last three and uh, 2700 disappeared. So working back towards that and you know, just finding some interesting places to play again. Life has changed a bit during the last few months with a new daughter who's almost four months old. Uh, so I won't be traveling as much as I was anyway. So I'll be picking tournaments a bit more. But hopefully chess just returns at some point and uh, able to move the pieces again. I'll be an odd sensation of having what to take, bishop or rook? A bishop, probably. I take the rook, he probably just ignores it. Yeah, an odd sensation to actually move chess pieces again after all this time. Just got used to clicking the mouse. Uh -huh. D4 check, queen b6 check. Let's go queen b6 check. I don't want to let the queens come off the board. I go d4 check. And I wanted to take on c3 first, but then he could have blocked the check with queen d4. Now take the knight. This has been quite a typical random dragon. Always good fun. Malta is one of those countries that I've never been to, but heard great things about, and it would be good to go. I don't know whether for a test tournament or just as a holiday. Mm. I was wondering whether to start with rook c5, but let's just take the pawn and then worry.
uh, probably contacting me is going to be easiest or my wife uh, to invite me. I'd be very appreciative of any invites. But uh, yeah, as I said, I'll have, I have to uh, have obligations at home, so I can't accept everything, unfortunately. Be emailing me and I'll try and uh, respond. It's always a shame to get rid of my dragon bishop, but I guess I should for a rook. And I just need two moves to get my rook into the game from h8 and then everything is under control. I can exchange queens, probably. I don't need to yet. Rook takes f7 check would be embarrassing to allow though. So now is probably the. Mm, Queen c6 is still bishop takes e6. So, I don't know. Prob I'm not sure if there is. <laughs> bishop takes e6, I can exchange queens and pin the, the bishop with rook e8 and see what's happening. I'm the exchange and what two pawns up. I'm probably losing two of them back. Oh, a fantastic looking move, but I think I can just take this rook, can't I? I'm not really sure what the point was first of the bishop either. But I'm not able to get my rook into the game, but when I'm a rook and exchange up, that's not too important. Thanks for the game. Why must I lose? Uh, it's a nice fighting game. Thanks for playing an interesting opening. Now time for that English, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I don't always play the dragon, but uh, it's fun too, because I try and keep this as a pure English. So I can take on d5 and play d4 and transpose to a tarash. That's quite hard not to transpose. But I'll, shall be, okay, time for a transposition. Yeah, thanks for the game. It was a, a nice fight. I have no idea whether what I did was sound. I'm trying to avoid established theory here, but uh, not sure if I'm succeeding. <laughs> yeah, con cal. It should be my flight right, but uh, I'm more of a Scotch player than an English player traditionally. I thought queen b6 was a bit more reliable, holding onto this pawn on c6. My rook is also trapped, but... Do I have anything strong now while black hasn't yet castled? Don't see anything immediate. But I picked up a pawn, so let's just attack another pawn. D4 is what Black would like to do, but Bishop C6 is embarrassing. If A6, I probably prevent castling with Bishop C5. Imalta would be an interesting place to go to as a 
I'm hoping speaking Italian and English. People, it should be quite easy to get by there. People should understand me. Uh, how are you holding on to your bishop now? I don't see it. I think it was important to hold on to this weakness on c6 with queen b6. Position uh, became a bit too ropey after that. Queen d4, I could take the bishop or I could win the exchange with bishop c5 as well. So it's looking good. Okay, trying for some not to play, but. Oh, my piece is defending f2, so I don't think I should be too worried. But of course, I need to pay attention. My knight on a3 is a bit strange. I'm going to just figure a way out to that knight. Oh, let's just push my pass pawns. Long message there. What? Uh, how is it? Maltese language. Does it have similarities to other Romance languages, or is it distinct? Okay, let's just carry on pushing these forms now. Yeah, most tournaments were cancelled this year, sadly. Okay, let's just keep pushing. Not exactly solved this problem with my knight on a3, but it's an extra piece, so I can ignore it. Hello, pawn pusher. Good to see you. Bishop f4 is going to be my next move. Attacking my, my bishop to force bishop f4. These sky jumpers. Hello, shadow mate. Are you there? Time for another dragon. Nope. I had a teammate uh, in Ireland. I was playing for Ennis, who used to play the setup all the time. With E4 and C4. And this is what I played against him. Grabbing the pawn is quite dangerous. The d3 square is so vulnerable. Yeah, I'm trying to play the <laughs> bishop c4 dragon. I think it's just too much theory. Uh, oh, it. For white players to remember, so they opt for a sideline early. Cheers, pawn pusher. Yeah, hopefully I'll be doing a bit more uh, streaming and bantering. Life's just been very busy in the last few months. And I'd like to uh, be able to have a proper schedule when I return. At the moment, I'm not really ever sure what I'm doing from week to week. Mm, what to play now? Jumping in knight d4 is most natural. Bishop takes c3 is kind of interesting, but so difficult for me to give up that bishop. Mm. 
or I can just attack the knight and force a4. Is b8 a better square for my queen than d8? Mm. Decisions, decisions. Probably end up losing on time here, just trying to find the most fun move. Okay, let's try it this way. Well, that was not a good move after that long thing. Knight d5, and uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Was it long think, wrong think? In a blitz game, you spend a minute on a move. Uh, let's go to a mistake. No problem, Mark. I'll try and play a Dutch too if I get to. Ooh, a reprieve. Yeah, 95 was a, a big problem. So this fork on c7 was unstoppable. I think I'd have had to give up my queen for two pieces and hope. So let's stop. Queen b3, the idea was to throw in 96. Just go and check. But this blocks it. Attacks the knight on b5 and throws 93 check. Hopefully things are back under control. So maybe the long variation. Well, yes, also long variation, long variation, form pusher. Uh, I think that one's very true, but still I find that having a long think often uh, it's a prelude to a blunder because especially in blitz where you have a long think because you're not sure about what's going on in the position and you don't really have enough time even if you think for a minute to reset you know thinking becomes very fuzzy good move shadow mate i think that was forced to try and hold on to everything mm. I don't know what's happening here. I should get my hand to play some moves rather than my brain. Okay, I wasn't sure about. It. It's far better to take this knight before the lemon of queen b6. But... Actually, that's the other thing that often happens. That's you realize the move should have been played a few moves previously. So you crowbar it into any position, even when it's really not the right move. And here I. Really, to have the bishop takes you through is the best move. I should probably have accepted that things have gone a bit wrong. Maybe defended my queen with rook b8 or something. At least this one is weird. Taking with the queen, I'll take on b5. Maybe. I'll have queen takes h8 and castle queen side, and we have a complete mess. I'll put the queen comes back. Maybe it's just a completely lost mess. Uh, I'll have music. It depends, really. It's some kind of. It depends what I'm doing as well. On I don't want the music to distract me. Uh, normally, some old classic rock or something. Some sixties playlist or seventies playlist or something. At the moment, I'm not listening to anything, uh, just the click of the moves. So I wanted to sack my rook, but I didn't see a good follow up. So I sack it anyway and hope that I find a good move. The problem is that Quintus G8 is mate after I give the rook. So yeah, I think I'd like to develop, sadly. Other opportunities to sacrifice will shortly appear. Okay. Um, take this pawn on e4. 
I've got ideas to sacrifice my queen as well by taking on b5 and twice and take on a1. And I don't really want to do that because it'll let him castle. And I'd like that king to be stuck in the center. So let's try opening the center. I've lost track of what's going on in this game. I'm a pawn down. Oh, I don't think that was the right way of defending. I think I got a bit lucky that Shadow Mate is running low on time. Yeah, that was definitely uh, not the greatest game by me. Knight d5 would have uh, put me in trouble. I still think that's probably a good line to play. And hello, Panda. are you there? Yep, okay, time for another dragon, maybe. I like piano uh, classical music, but I'm very ignorant, unfortunately. If you can recommend some good songs, I'd be happy to listen. Before it lets me play knight g4, but I'll uh, not play it for now. Just if we get a bishop c4. I like pianist musicians though. Tim Mitchin style. So we get yet another game with knight castle queen side rather than knight c4. Mm. I think he exchanged those knights the wrong way around. You normally take. Sorry, the dog getting impatient in the background. I think it said dinner time. Uh, yeah, normally you take on c6 first, not to allow this as an option. Now black's bishops look much more aggressively placed than whites. I'd like some beautiful way of bishop takes a2 and bishop takes b2 for mate, but with just the queen, there's not enough firepower, but maybe if I can bring the rook in. I'll have some chances. It's a pawn to grab on e7 if he really wants it. But he wants the end game instead. I want to play queen d5. Yeah, let's see. How you're defending this one. I have to be careful that uh, for example, bishop e2 would be very strong if it weren't, but queen takes a2 is a threat. I might press bishop c4, but queen takes d1. As it is, b3 is not moved, but White wants to play because the long diagonal was so weak with queen e5. So I guess either c4 or queen back to b3. What he's deciding between. c4 again weakens the diagonal quite a lot. But queen b3 also meant I would move my queen with discovered attack on that bishop. So probably wasn't really a good move. Now, let's see, I can use the other diagonal as well. Sorry guys. So I was thinking about queen f5 as well, but queen b3 seems to defend everything. So we'll play the normal way, push f5. Now, do you have a defense to queen e2? I'm obviously attacking the one on d3. There's also a hidden attack on, he has a rook on d1 because of the pin. Oh yeah, that one defends both. But bring in more firepower.
the dragon is a very nice opening when uh, it goes well. One in accuracy from white and just all black's initiative. And you've not really given anything up for it. You've got a nice structure as well. I don't think Blunder has a solution here. Triumph for the dragon. Thank you, Blunder Panda. Dangerous ride. Hello, are you there? And we get a Dutch. Now this is going to be a dangerous ride for me rather than him, I think. Should I go for it? I'll try and play the some sort of hybrid between the classical Dutch and the Nimzo. This position is a bit more normal with bishop back on e7. Probably it's time for me to take that knight though, because otherwise my bishop might uh, get embarrassed if you miss time. Now, what would the ginger GM do here? Is knight c6, d5 a problem? Mm -hmm. Hopefully not. Cheers, Blunder. Yeah, the dragon is very tricky in Blitz. To get that move order right is uh, not straightforward. I think this is a pretty decent Dutch. If I compare it to the Grand Prix attacks I've played a lot, we have more or less the same position. I've had to spend two tempi on playing e4 as it is with e6, e5. I don't think White's played a very critical setup. Doubling the C pawns is always useful. Get some counterplay against the weak pawn on C4 in particular, with knight A5 and B6 and bishop A6. And it's quite hard for White to have any counterplay as well. So I can take on D4. But let's just uh, keep it closed. Probably take on D4 one up pawn. Looked a bit murky. Here I'd like to try and find some. I'm going to try and mate somehow. I can at least do on Queen H. Yeah. Let's just put my pieces towards his king and uh, see what comes out in the wash. Uh, we both have an English accent. But more than that, Zealand, I think uh, our accent is quite distinct. He's from the south of England, and I grew up in the north. Okay, if h3, I'm just grabbing that pawn. Otherwise, I'm probably going to go bishop g4 and provoke h3. G5, G4 is also fun, but probably I can do it with pieces. I can leave my pawns behind. But yeah, you'd probably have to judge yourself listening to both of us. Yeah, difficult position. Maybe white should be playing something like queen B3 to tie my bishop down to c8 for a move, and also trying some c5 checks. Maybe even start with c5. Doing the rook instead. Same idea, but that doesn't necessarily tie my bishop down. Okay, let's go for it. What's the idea of queen d3? Thank you. 
So it's hoping it's going to be safe on E2. How to get in at it. It's not so straightforward. Um, this was a good defensive setup. Do I go for an absolute mess with G5 here? Can I get away with playing go? Cowardly move. Let's be a cowardly for move with rook b8. I'm reluctant to open up my own king immediately with g5 when his pieces are coming in so fast. This isn't a retreat, it's a strategic rerouting. No, I'm not Welsh Dutch defender, even if my name sounds, uh, sounds it. Thank you, Mesha. Yeah, me and lots of good friends, known each other for a long time. I think he's something like a year older than me. So we were playing each other in all of the junior events. What's going on? England does have a lot of accents. Supposedly, each village used to have its distinct own accent. The linguists could uh, figure out the difference between a couple of miles. Listening to the accent could place completely. But because I've traveled so much, I think mine is a bit of a hodgepodge. I want my knight on c5, but I don't see a good way of getting there. I'm a bit concerned about the bishop landing on e6. So if given infinite time, I would put my knight on c5. But I don't think dangerous ride will give me infinite time. I mean, if it was a bit risky. Maybe more than a bit risky. Rook f1 is a nasty threat. Okay, let's try take back, please. I'll go for a different move. I don't know if Wales is so bad at chess, Prof. Nome, compared to uh, the UK of overall, if you compare relative populations. The vast majority of uh, the GMs, it feels, come from London to me, but I might be mistaken. A bit scared I'm getting mated here. Like I'm the only Grandmaster who lives in Yorkshire and was born in Yorkshire, I believe. For a population point of view, we should have more, really. I'm hoping the rugby doesn't harm your chess. I do like it. Playing rugby, and I was playing until recently, uh, pre lockdown. Now, what's going on? If I get mated, I'll blame the rugby. I'm hoping that because my these are in dark squares, I can't be kicked away. I like square bishop. But something certainly went wrong in this game. Can I take this? My 98 looks passive, but I think it's doing quite an important job. Now I want to open up the lines. Let's start with rook b2. C4 check is definitely what I 
want to play. It looks like the queens are coming off. Um, so it's, let's see how fast I can move. Okay, to flag me, I thought you would keep rooks on the board. Pushing pawns is, should be pre movable. Oof. Thanks, Dangerous Ride. That was a good game. It definitely gave me a stern test. Things went a bit wrong. But the Dutch was quite successful. Try in English again. Hello, Real Fredos. Uh, I was streaming a fair bit earlier in the year, but what should we do? We can ask attack. Uh, but yeah, I got very busy with other projects and I wasn't sure exactly when I could commit to streaming. Uh, but I hope to get back into it. I have my Twitch channel and I'll uh, tweet about when. Let's just keep pushing my pawns. <laughs> when I get back into it properly, I'll try and publish a schedule and tweet about it. So what is going on here? How do I want to defend that pawn? I guess I need to play f3 if I'm holding on to both e4 and g4. Something like an old Indian, this one. Or is it from a Mykonos attack? So I'm tempo up because normally e5 would have been played on one go. Ooh, going aggressive. Let's hope I'm not being mated. I think everything is under control. The advantage of having the space means your king can run over. Where in Yorkshire did you visit? Is the Zealand Zen. Uh, and I was playing flanker. I was trying to play number eight when I could, prof gnome. But when I started off at primary school, I was a prop and hooker, and I gradually moved backwards. I wouldn't want to go back into that front row again. Okay. My pawns are rather too much in this game, maybe, but the knight is very strong on c5. It'd be nice to push it away. Now f5 looks like the root of counterplay, so let's prepare for that. I was in a lot of trouble in the last game. It doesn't surprise me. Things went very wrong. Yeah, I was very lucky in that last one. And the C5 outpost here is more important than a pawn. Try to get my pieces developed. York is a beautiful city. I grew up in the uh, North Yorkshire Moors. Uh, York was not our nearest city. About 20 miles away. I still got friends and family in York. A lot of very good pubs. Uh, I might have, I confess, I haven't really been following the uh, European rugby scene recently. But the Kiwi wife, it's all the New Zealand rugby. So we're watching Super Rugby Aotearoa and watching the Mitre 10 at the moment. He 
easier than doing it how to play rugby. <laughs> Got most of the team there, Mark. Not quite sure I should do this. Objectively, black shouldn't have enough for the piece, but in these kind of King's Indian style positions, it's always very murky. Now is d4 going to be a big problem? I'm hoping that my kingside play is coming. I'm playing a bit too slowly. I think I'm winning back the piece because of the pin. Uh, uh, okay, going too long time, so let's get the initiative and hope. So that's f six is a nasty threat. So if the bishop moves to h four, then uh, really no idea what's going on still. <laughs> Am I throwing h five? And one way of finding it. Let's keep pushing it. Okay, so I've got three pieces for the rook now. And I should move a bit faster. Nice rail, Fredos. After the uh, dodgy piece that you outplayed me, it became a total mess. Let's go back to e4 again. I played a few Englishes. Another power law. Scotch Gambit. I was that was one of my knights controlling the f4 square. That I didn't notice. Move ordering into uh, a line I've had a few times. The check is a bit unusual. These days they normally drop back to b6. That's perfectly fine. I don't remember exactly how I'm supposed to do this. Well, I allowed that takes d4. That's a bit careless. So I wish it was hanging on b5. But no harm done now. Now I try and play positionally against this weak c6 form. This will be quite a heavy prop these days. Mark, uh, sorry, a heavy winger as well as a, a sort of battering ram style of uh, John Alomu esque. But yeah, the uh, typical idea of a full boy rugby is having the spiked guys out on the wing. And the big heavy ones like us in the forwards. I think the, the quality of my games definitely uh, <laughs> went downhill a bit as I got short on time. Let's try and uh, focus on keeping things together. Hello, Steegy. Sounds like the hacker. Let's try and just... I only need to keep one of my A forms. But I prefer of the two to keep the A5 form. Go pawn hunting. So 
Sorry, everyone. She's getting very impatient. How shall I take that? Rule F3 is not really a threat. So let's. It is a move that I should be preventing. But let's try and take some activity instead. Take on F3, I can take on D8. And otherwise, I'm going to play root D7 and take on G7. I think it would have been fun to be a center. But 14 stone is uh, what I was probably when I was 14 years old, but not since then. Now, is the pin the most reliable way of doing it? Maybe I could have got some mate with rook b8 and winkle the king out, but the queen's off the board should be. My extra three pawns should count. Thank you, Paolo. Yeah, the pawns are too strong. Uh, not sure how much more time we have. I'll see. Uh, this might be the last game. We might be able to squeeze one more in after. Are you here? I'm not sure how to pronounce. Fake. Like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This one and maybe one more afterwards, and then we'll. There should be five. Check. Boo. No dragon. Okay, let's try and play this a bit. Aggressively, at least. I've got ideas of playing g5 at some point. Channeling my ginger GM. I have to be patient for now. That's a d3. Thanks, Paolo. This one, one more, and then I can sort out the dog. Bishop g5 is a good strategic move, but this weakness on d5, knights are much more valuable than bishops. That's why I played the weird knight g8. If I was left with a dark square bishop, I'd be unable to control that square. Really, the nightmare scenario for black would be to be stuck with a dark square bishop against a knight. Okay, let's go for the unsound kingside attack. can't open the center immediately, so it's not going to be super unsound. Just keep going. I can't remember what the conversion is. Dutch defender. I think I'm 15 stone or 95 kilos. So however that uh, converts. It's strange. I know that we haven't quite got around to the metric system yet. But then we can't understand the American imperial system either. So I want to play g4, but knight takes h4. Do I have a? Maybe I just say, OK, I've lost a pawn, but I can attack down the h file. Oh, so I could take and then jump my knight into f4. Or I ignore it. If I take and jump the knight into f4, then d4 might be a bit annoying. 
Okay, let's ignore it. Defend the pawn on g5. No, I was hoping h3 was going to be a useful hook to attack against. If I give white enough time for the knight h2 to g4, then his position looks quite good. So I think it's time to sacrifice a pawn. No, I don't think the h pawn is, well, it's quite a good attacking piece, but being a pawn down isn't very relevant with the pressure on g2. Okay, the pouring rain starting. Good autumnal weather. So I think I'm threatening. I don't threaten actually f5. I want to get rook takes g2 and queen g5 somehow. And then I'd be attacking g2 for mate and knight h3 check, picking up the queen. Okay, now to g3, none of those are going to be relevant. Uh, probably I should be looking at getting my king to safety. And get my final piece in the attack. Now I could start with queen g5. If he just moves the queen, then is there a point to it? Or just moves the king. Okay, let's just play queen f6. My next two moves, if allowed, a castle queen side and rook h8. Now I'm sacrificing my knight. Possible, yes, sound, probably not. If queen h8, he takes the knight. I don't see any kill. Hmm. Yeah, my attack is running out of steam here a bit. Okay, I think I'll sacrifice the knight unsoundly. I didn't see a way of uh, continuing. Objectively, I'm definitely lost here. Bin blitz, I'm hoping there are still enough tricks. But it's definitely a, a tricks required position. I thought the pawn sacrifice looked quite reasonable, but uh, things didn't quite work out. Yeah, queen c3, good move. That's what I was dreading. Uh, I have to put more fuel on the embers of my position. and pray that something happens. I'm not sure why he didn't take my pawn on c5 when he could. Not that this is uh, not winning for him, of course, but give the option again. But now there's some scenarios where I'm getting decent counterplay. If F takes, let's even offer the exchange of queens. So I'll take this one on C2 and then maybe my rooks on the seventh plus. The Decently advanced past pawn. Give me some practical chances. I don't want my rooks. 
pushing the point immediately, rook f1 was annoying. So I need to keep this point on f4 if I've got any hope of salvaging something here. Or what his plan was here, because if he takes, I've got rook f1 check and the rook on a1 drops after the exchange. That's an interesting position. Wasn't it still isn't so clear how he's supposed to improve. Probably rook a3 before giving the pawn was better. But, um, still a complete mess, which is a lot more than I. Should really have got from this game. So I want to check, doesn't matter which rook I start with. And my idea here doesn't work at all. Somehow I thought I was queening the pawn. Uh, yeah, okay. Except that that was. Brain meltdown. Uh, I need to move here. This is going to come down to a who can pre move more accurately. Five seconds. Well, probably the final position is drawn. I got very lucky there. Um, well played. It's another game where I got outplayed and uh, managed to create enough tricks for the game to continue. Did I miss mate in two, Ruffle? Or did he? It got very random there. This will be the last game. Uh, match one. Are you here, Tekele? I was only supposed to be playing for 90 minutes. But yeah, that was an interesting game. Definitely something went wrong. Okay, you're sorry. Not there. I'll try one last game. Uh, OIT, you've been there since the start. Let's go back to an English. Ah, okay. Careless to miss the uh, main two. Thanks for the game, Conrad. Uh, you played very well. I was very lucky. Mm. Sort of more a gambit. Okay. Two. Finchetting up my bishop. Better than normally. Don't go for against the Mora. So watch out the E4 isn't annoying here, but I think I can just take it. Yeah, it got very random into the last game, as blitz games often do. Get this one, I'll try and keep a bit more under control. Maybe I should have played bishop g5 before he blocked it with h6. Mm. Be very careful. Try and control some squares. Like some sort of hedgehog structure with colors reversed. If there were pawn on c7, it would be more normal. Now here I was hoping that h4 worked, but I'm not sure it really does. It's bishop g4 as well as take on d3, take on f5, take on c2, take on e7. That pawn survives on c2. Okay, so I'll have to take instead. Black has a decent initiative. But a pawn's a pawn.
I was expecting rook d8 here. Maybe he was concerned by knight d2. Now do I? Okay, let's just take that. I was looking at queen d5. Let's continue my plan of just trying to get my pieces out and eventually convert the extra pawn on a very good day. I had that one ready. So I could like to keep control uh, pressure on my now in f3, but queen f5 is the only way to do it, and then I can go to h4. Now, can I be greedy? Try grabbing a second pawn. Playing the English has the advantages. I right, like playing a non critical dragon. Yeah, the c4e5s. Of course, I'm familiarity with the structures. After the craziness of the last two, this one's been a bit more to date. Although I probably have missed something. Yeah, pawn grabbing is uh, not normally my style, Thomas. Normally I'm the one giving all the pawns, but in some ways it's easier just to take the pawns and ask your opponent to justify the sacrifice, make them play creatively for a change. I think opposition is solid enough, I can justify it. Just take pawns when I can and exchange pieces otherwise. A check, I'll play a check. You my exchanging plan. And Magnus is very good at judging when to sacrifice and when to eat the pawns. Okay, now I just need to make sure I find a safe home for my king. Really hear that the dog is back. <laughs> One H4 is never going to be any perpetuals. So I can happily grab another one. Game OET. It's, uh, it was easier for me to just eat the pawns. You had to justify it somehow. And there probably was some way of justifying it. Well, that's it for me tonight, guys. Thanks a lot for all following, and apologies to people I didn't get to play. Um, thanks for all your challenges, and hopefully I'll get to play you next time. If you send me an early challenge, I'm trying to accept the old, sorry, dog distracted me again, the uh, oldest challenges first. So first come, first served feels fairest. Uh, I'll be playing back on Chess 24 again next weekend, I believe. So uh, hopefully see you all there. And thanks everyone.